Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today I would like to offer the elemental energy reading for the energy of Earth for the month of December 2023. And this is the last month of the year already, so weird to say. Um, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like if you enjoy this type of content, and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. So to start things off, I'm going to start with the I Ching reading, and I've already cast the hexagram beforehand, so it save us a little bit of time there. Um, and if you're curious as to why I read elements instead of the zodiac, uh, I have a video in the description, video link in the description below you can check out. Um, it's just because I'd rather, I'm more comfortable with elements than I am with zodiac, so that's why I go that route. But if you're curious, Earth covers the element, the zodiac signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So if you're one of those, or if you have earth high up in your elemental alignment which if you have if you've had your charts done it's in there um this one is for you so we'll start off with the I Ching, and we have hexagram 25 integrity and the unexpected that could be interesting for december it's the end of the year <laughs> so the text is integrity sublime success righteous persistence brings reward those opposed to righteousness meet with injury it is not favorable to have in view any goal or destination so at this point it's definitely time just to chill to not focus so much on I have all these plans and goals and dreams achievements just take a minute success is in the continual movement not in rushing to it um, that's where it says it's not favorable to have a view or goal in sight that does not mean that you don't want to have it it's just stay constant with what you already have you may not reach your end game at this point so keep plodding along but it's not worth rushing into So, we'll start with the bottom line, our foundation line here. And it is moving onward with integrity brings good fortune. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one else is looking. And basically, you want to make sure that you're always acting ethically and morally as you're moving on your goals, your projects, your dreams. And that can be personal, business, relationships. Be open and upfront. Don't hide things and don't try to be sneaky is the real part of this. So our second line, our first broken line, do not calculate the size of the harvest while the plowing is still in progress, nor gloat over the third year's crop while planting the virgin ground. It is favorable to seek some object or destination. Don't over, <laughs> don't over expect from the future. If you haven't laid the groundwork, that stuff down the road doesn't count. So work on what you're doing today get the plans the next steps now your goal down the road is great that's a big you know um, somewhat mythical thing down the road and so you're planning you're still going for that but worry, worry about your next step and not so much worry but like work on your next step so your third line, unexpected calamity. Someone ropes an ox and leads it off a gain to the passer, passerby, but a loss to the farmer who owns it. So even if something doesn't quite go your way this month, that doesn't mean to stop working towards your goals. But it's something that's unexpected. Something may come in this month for Earth that kind of sideswipes you a little bit it doesn't mean that everything's over it means that there's going to be a hiccup in the plan but it doesn't mean that you have a reason to stop you still have to keep going the whatever happens may be a really frustrating but it doesn't mean the end of the situation sorry um so our fourth place line 
Something can be accomplished by righteous persistence and no error is involved. So as long as you're staying consistent with your integrity and your hard work, that's what's important. And as long as you're doing that, even the calamity is going to be easily rectified. So our fifth line, unexpected illness, but it will be best not to treat it. If something comes up, go the right routes for you, but it also is meaning that just because something comes in and sideswipes you, it doesn't mean you have to throw everything at it. You don't need a nuclear bomb to fix a sliver. So <laughs> that's what they're talking about is be judicial with how you deal with things that come up in this month of December. So our capstone here, our top one, if it is unexpected, a journey now would be injurious. This is a time favorable for those with no destination in view. Do not make long-term plans. Do not go far-reaching this month. They're really, the I Ching is saying there are some things outside of what you're expecting, outside of your blinder fold, so your viewpoint, so to speak, that are not so much conspiring against you, but definitely not working in your favor this month. So tread lightly, S keep working on the next steps. Don't worry so much about the destination. You'll get to your goals, whatever those goals may be for you. But in this particular moment, just take the time to work on the next steps. Really do everything to the best of your ability. Be honest with your in interactions. Have integrity in everything that you do and all communications this coming month of October. But that's kind of where they're at with that information right now. So we'll hop over to the tarot. There are approximately five weeks in, or four weeks in December. So we'll go through and read for each week. I read a guide or guardian, depending on what energy you need that week. A uh, guide is going to help you along the way. A guardian is going to help deflect things that are uh, unpleasant. <laughs> um, a message from source, which is a positive reinforcement of something that's coming in, or maybe words of encouragement. And then we look at a lesson or a challenge from the tarot. It could be a lesson you can work on that week or giving you the heads up that there might be something a little challenging that week. Um, so we'll hop into that. If you're interested in any of the decks or the book on I Ching that I'm using, they're linked in, in, linked in the description down below. And with that, we'll get started with our first week's guide or guardian. It is the water dragon. Helps you flow easily around obstacles. Christ, light, and love are flowing. Develop your psychic abilities. Go with the flow. So your first week, you have water, which does work with earth quite well. And with that, earth can be a little stubborn. Earth can be a little uh, stuck in its ways and solid. Water is coming in. The water dragon is coming in to say things may not always work the way you anticipate. That's fine. Working with the Christ light energy is a way to flow around those situations. Um, and if you wonder how earth can move like water, if you've ever seen a mudslide, it is a powerful, powerful thing, but it just looks like regular dirt in most cases, but it's moving with the sh form and activity and motion of water. So there are ways, and it can be a little uh, <laughs> destructive when earth and water work together, but in this instance, it's helping guide you around the situations that are less than pleasant. But it does it in such a way that you almost look like you mean to be making those steps even though it's probably not what you're doing you're kind of just flowing with it but it's happening so gracefully that everyone else that sees it thinks that you have planned it that way so this first week is really about going with the flow and tapping into that more fluid more gentle nature so let's see what your message from source is it is the crown chakra upgrade divine connection holy experiences miraculous energy the crown chakra sits directly at the very pinnacle of your head some people actually have a little flat spot right there on the top that's about the size of the tip of your finger there we go um, but the crown chakra and working with those upgrades this is that time, the first week of December is saying, 
this is when things are opening up. You're learning to go with the flow. You're tapping into your more intuitive or psychic abilities. And the reason is your crown chakra is starting to open up even more. Um, the ancients believed that the crown chakra was a thousand petaled lotus. And for each spiritual knowledge, lesson, or ability you gained, another petal opened. So during this uh, first week of December, be aware that that chakra is really going to be coming active. And that that they're showing me that that can be very very beneficial but just be aware that that is happening during this first week and source is saying it's it's something that you've been planning prepping and growing towards and now is the time for some of this behind the scenes activity to be taking root uh, and that's where some of like in the I Ching it said don't really plan much this month just go with the flow take the next step type energy and this is why um, with the messages are because it's time for things to be behind the scenes working opening up and developing and if you put so much of your focus energy and attention on this is the goal this is where we have to go I have to go down this road there you're going to miss the benefit of these things that are behind the scenes happening so you want to make sure that you're taking the next steps and really focusing on the now for the month of December but this first week in particular <laughs> your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the ten of swords so we're working with the ten of air this is cutting away of knowledge of illusion the dis disillusion or the dissolving of illusion and when we have the ten of swords it's the end of a cycle so you have been going through a period of clearing you've been going through a period of removing of breaking down the illusion um <laughs> unplugging from the matrix i'm not sure why they brought that up but really you've been waking up to the fact that the world is a lot more than what you were taught to believe in the first place and the ten of swords is saying it's time to wake up from the last of the illusions that you've been dealing with in the moment and that could come through the opening of the crown chakra coming up this week working with the upgrades that are occurring in that aspect but the ten of swords is really about you've done a lot of work and air works with earth as well as water does so I don't know sorry air is opposites wrong brain air is opposite so there's this is not something that's going to be easy but walking with integrity for earth is what we are looking at right here and that's what they're talking about is you've cut away those illusions which are is not comfortable but it's something that was necessary and this first week is just reminding you you've done a lot and you've come to the end of a cycle so be ready for the next cycle to start but this is a good time just to take a breath and not stress about the future just kind of be where you're at for the moment so let's look at the second week of December is Thor's red black and gold dragon protects you in a time of change a time of rapid transition and transformation relax you're safe so we're have working with guard energies big time in <laughs> the second week. And this could be where that unexpected uh, calamity, illness, or fill in the blank that the I Ching was talking about is going to manifest as the second week. But you're working with Thor. So you're working with the son of a god's energy. But it's his. the specific dragon is red, black, and gold. Red is the color of fire. Black is the color of protection. But it's also grounding. And gold is a divine color. So you're dealing with a protecting, grounding, but also divinely inspired and a divinely uplifting dragon in this second week. And that's allowing you to be okay with the changes that are occurring. The unexpected um, quote unquote calamity or illness that may come up. It's not something that's going to knock you off your path. It's going to be more of a frustration because the dragons are coming in to say we're going to protect you from this we are only going to catch a small section of what really could be coming forward so just be aware that with this type of protective energy coming in they're going to help deflect stuff that could have been a lot worse so um the second week is really about you stepping into your ability to trust the divine and how god's source energy is guiding things around you so that it's not you still have your lessons to learn but it's not as bad as it could be type of thing 
So, your message from source is Akashic Stargate, aligned with purpose, crossroads, and no wrong path. When you're dealing with these big life changes and these um, unexpected things, illnesses, calamities, etc., it's a good suggestion or a good idea to meditate on your Akashic records, tap into that awakened record keeping and find out why am I in this situation? What's going on here that needs this type of information to come forward? And in most cases, you'll be able to, if it's something that you need to know in this time, you'll be able to see you, this is why, this is where, this is what's happening this is the outcome and so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on and why it's happening uh, even if you're not able to or granted that knowledge a lot of times they will at least advise you on how your Akashic Records Keeper will be able to advise you on this is the best option at this time or this is these are your um, these are the options the choices that you have to make these two are the ones that are a little bit higher on the scale of energy, so you might want to lean that direction. But it's the message from Source is just tapping into your Akashic Records so that you understand why everything is happening the way it is in this second week, and in general, but the second week in particular. <laughs> so your lesson or challenge from the Tarot is the Three of Pentacles, Three of Earth. There's a time, even though that things may not be the greatest, this is a time where there's almost success starting to build for you. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. This second week looks like it's a little, going to be a little bit rough, just in the fact that you've got a lot of protection coming in. Um, there is this belief, this um, urging to tap into the Akashic records, but you also have at the end of the week, or part of the, not the end of the week. I'm sorry, your lesson or your challenge is even though things are happening you're still moving towards your goals and because you're tapping into the akashic you have the protection that's deflecting a lot of the negative energy that's coming in it's allowing you to start to see the benefit of what you've been doing it's showing you that there is some success coming forward again i read intuitively so this is what my guides are bringing in um, and so there's just this energy of yeah things aren't where they you where you want them but they're not as bad as they could be so just keep that in mind <laughs> so let's look at the third week of december for our fire our earth friends and we have the golden christed dragon bring your higher brings you higher love so that you can embody christ light absorb Christ light you are protected expand your heart and remain fifth dimensional so this dragon is helping you tap into that Christ light energy the term Christ was actually a title for an ascended teacher an ascended master so you have a lot of power with that energy this Christ light energy comes through as in most cases if you're just calling upon that energy it is the purest white light it is warm, it is healing, it just bathes you in energy. But you have the golden Christed dragon coming in. So you have that divine, beautiful white Christ light, but you're also getting the very, very powerful divine masculine golden energy building this golden Christed light. And when you do that, it allows you to remain in a more high frequency state, a fifth dimensional state, so to speak. But it also is helping you clear your chakras awaken them to their higher frequency they spin a lot cleaner the light is brighter it also activates other chakras if you've only worked with the base seven which is fine having the golden christ to dragon in this third week could actually start to give you awareness of the three above and the one below so that you're starting to activate those fifth dimensional chakra system as well. So this third week is, even though the second week wasn't so great, this third week is about spiritual expansion and growth. And you have uh, a lot of Christ light energy coming in and divine masculine that's going to help guide you through this new expansion. They're wanting me to say though, none of this is going to be drastic. These are going to be big energy things behind the scenes the outside world 
you may not notice much of a difference if you notice anything immediately, but the changes and the transformations are going on um, in the energetic field and the spiritual world. So your lesson or your message from source is the holy grail, inner discoveries, finding sacredness, you are what you seek. The holy grail is the ultimate in a lot of the uh, Knights Templar myths. It's also tied to some of the Gnostic information loosely. But the Holy Grail was a chalice that was rumored, legend holds, however you want to say it, to have caught the blood of Christ when he was on the cross, basically making this a sacred goblet. And at that point, that cup became a vessel for uh, unlimited health, unlimited healing, and eternal life. So the message that's coming in here is the Holy Grail is something that may exist, may not exist. In alchemy, it would be the Philosopher's Stone. You find what you seek because it's already within you. It's a matter of awakening it and bringing it up. That's where the Golden Christed Dragon can help you awaken that more divine aspect of who you are, turning on or enhancing some of the chakra system, which is divine technology or spiritual technology. And the Holy Grail is saying, you're seeking something that you already possess, but you don't realize it because you're looking out here and not in here. You're not looking in your heart. You're not looking into the system that has been granted you by the Creator because He planted within you a star seed. All of us have stardust. We're all made of stardust. Whether you're a um, star seed interplanetary being that's come in for an experience or you're just existing here, we're all made of stardust. <laughs> so you have the thing that you've been searching for. It's that realization of, oh, I already have it. But you have it inside. Your search outside is not always helpful. And that's what the Holy Grail is, is the Holy Grail turns you back into yourself. It's an outside vessel that brings you back into yourself. And that's what they're talking about with it's what you're seeking you already have it's because you can look around all day long for your goals to be out here fine and dandy but if you're not doing the work in here and in your heart that outside goal you'll never find so you have the golden christ to dragon saying let's elevate you let's work these energies let's bring this into its higher frequency and you have the goal holy grail saying you're do, you've done the work. It's already there. The manifestation of what you're looking for exists. It's a matter of accepting it. So going within this third week and really meditating and bringing those uh, or positive visualizations. And when you do the vis visualizations, bring in that golden Christed energy and really enhance that vision. Put everything with a golden sheen like a halo around it bring in that Christ light, enhance it, and make it so much more intense because the better you can visualize it here and here, here and here, <laughs> the more um, it will be able to be brought into your life because you're actually believing it, that it exists already, and that's that um, holy grail aspect. So let's look at your lesson or challenge from the tarot. We have a major arcana card, and it's number 13, the death card. This does not mean death in bad. Death in the tarot can have a lot of different meanings and what they're bringing forward is your search outside is over. You're done. The lesson is it's death to the outward. You've been doing all the work out here and that's fine. The next steps, again, that travel without a destination is what the, uh, I Ching's talking about. It's because the destination is not out here. It's not in the world. Your destination, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions, everything that you want is in the now moment. To experience the now, you have to look within. And that's the death to the outside world. It doesn't mean death to ego because you can't kill the ego. It's just a tool. You can learn to control the ego, which is what you're supposed to do. Uh, but the death card is saying the end is the outward search. It's fruitless. You've done a lot of digging. You've done a lot of growth. But it's time to stop looking out and time to start really start looking within. So let's see what the fourth and final week of December, and oddly enough, the final week of 2023, has for Earth energy. There we go. Your guide or guardian is the Earth and Air Dragon, Union of Opposites. 
represents a perfect balance of heaven and earth. Stay balanced, ground your wisdom, manifest your hopes and dreams. It's really, really talking about bringing the inner world and the outer world into alignment. It is the goal of alchemy to transform the um, gold, lead into gold. And by doing that, you're changing the human into the divine. You're bringing yourself into that higher aspect from the third dimension into the fifth. And that's where your elevation is. This fourth week is looks just from the um, dragon that they brought forward, which is the earth and air dragon. It's the merging of the opposites. So in the second or the third week, it was about stopping the outside search. It's unnecessary. And with this fourth week, it's saying it's unnecessary because what you have in here needs to be brought back out. So you're not looking out in the outside world anymore. It's all in here. And once you start working through this, then you start to bring that out. That's where the uh, belief of manifestation comes in. The practice of manifestation is being able to turn off the outside world. That, that is the matrix. You can literally adjust it through consciousness once you are trained on it. But bringing that in, focusing, really putting all the details into it, and then putting it into the modern now, not modern, the immediate now moment where you have it in your hand. You can physically see it in your mind's eye. It's right there. Then you bring it into the outside world. That's that union of opposites. As above, so below. Heaven and earth are merging. They're bringing that stuff into manifestation. In alchemy, it's as within, so without. Meaning, once you have it inside, it appears out here. And that's why the third week was saying, quit looking out. What you want is not out there. It's inside. So you have to start working with the inside energy and then it will start to align things in the outside world to bring those to you. So your message from source is the crystal skull wisdom, clarity, divine healing, high vibrational energy. The crystal skulls are a connection to our galactic council. They're a connection to a higher frequency. They are very, very powerful in their origin. And when you have one of them come forward in a reading, it's meaning what you are searching is literally within, but there is a way to connect to a much higher frequency to bring aid and guidance in. So you're working with that crystal skull energy. So you're bringing that divine guidance into your awareness, into your consciousness, allowing you to tap into those deeper um, deeper records. They're showing me, again, the, the Akashic records. So as you're manifesting, understand that you're not just doing it here. You're actually altering the course of your life by doing that. And it's little stuff in the moment, but it can cause massive change, beneficial down the road. So you just, they're really saying just keep focusing on the things inside and allow the universe to bring them to you on the outside. So your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Earth, Knight of Coins. And so it's really about not being too arrogant is what the lesson or challenge is. As you're doing this work, things will start towards the end of the month to speed up and start moving again. When I say start, it doesn't through the month you were working in the spiritual energy, the Akashic realm, so or the astral realm, so to speak. And now that it's being brought more into the physical, things are starting to move again. That does not mean it's going to be quick. It does not mean that it's going to be overnight. But things are rolling and they're starting to move. But this is where you just keep taking the next steps. The goal down the road is great. You can have that. But don't be so focused on the outside reaching for that goal that you forget to do the inner work. Because for you in this month especially, they're saying that the inner work is actually more important than any outer work that you're going to do. So with that, I will uh, end this little reading. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video, and let me know your thoughts. Let me know any <laughs> suggestions, ideas, uh, as long as we're respectful. I'm open to all you've open to everything, including constructive criticism. Um, with that, I will let you guys go. Have a great month of December, and I will see you in a future video.